For more content like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and come and sub to my Twitch channel as well if you really want to help me out. Also, guys, I want to let you guys know that I am still coaching, so if you guys are interested in a coaching session with me, make sure to go ahead and DM, DM me on Discord or on Twitter. Rates 20 an hour. If you guys are interested, make sure to hit me up. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh. All right, man, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the session. What do you want to work on today, fam? What can I help you with? Um, looking for a little bit of the matchup help with uh, Terry versus Ken. Terry Ken? Okay, yeah. so okay, so you're struggling in the Terry Ken matchup. What is it exactly you're struggling with against Ken? Ken's BS ring. combos. I don't know how to <laughs> DI out of them. Okay. Yeah, I guess the first thing we're gonna have to talk about if you're dealing with like if it's uh, dealing with uh, disadvantage, we'll talk about SDI, and we'll talk about um, mostly just like what you need to be looking for. Um, mainly, like another thing is just knowing how to like you know play like out wall him out in neutral because Terry has great options for like just covering there and shit like that because of how good our buttons are. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull you in here. You play Terry and Ryu, don't you? Uh huh. That's what I thought. So who are you trying to learn the matchup with, Ryu or, or Terry or both? Terry. Terry, that's understandable. I do. I do okay with Ryu. Um, it's it's more so um, I can wall out with Ryu pretty easily, but. When somebody gets in on Terry with Ken, I, I get just butchered. Hmm. Yeah, that would make sense. The thing is, it's really great about Terry is like his nair. If you jump in place, it actually like slaps away. Uh, if you space it properly, it'll actually either beat or trade with Ken's. So like, okay. if you understand like how to use your out of shield game and shit like that, it kind of can be hard for Ken to get in if you play properly. But we'll get into that. This is actually a matchup I haven't played at top level that often. I probably need to hit up Psychonics or somebody and really learn it. I'll do a first to five with them or something. But, okay, I'm going to go Ken. You go ahead and go Terry. First thing we're going to do is, like, I'm going to kind of break down the things that I know. That way you'll understand some of the counterplay, and then we'll go from there and we'll play some games. Okay. Plus one Ryu? Nah. I think Ryu, like, I think all the FGC boys go even with each other. And I stand by that. They all have clear counterplay to each other. You just really have to know how to exploit the weaknesses of each other. And if, they, like, if you're dealing with an opponent who understands, like, the weak, like if a like, Kim player knows the weakness of Terry and vice versa, like, I'm it's very ready. even. Like, you can't have the footsie tools that all three of these characters have and not do well against each other. So, first off, the main thing you gotta understand is, like, anytime they're trying to approach or anything like that, so, like, what kind of Kim player are you dealing with? Are we talking about, like, a super aggressive, like, I'm gonna come in and unga bunga? Aggressive. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, like, I don't know if, uh,. In the in the Discord, I, I've played Mute a few times. Oh, I know Mute. And yeah, he's real aggressive on me. And okay. Like I said, once he gets in and gets me in Crescent Kick, I take all kinds of percent. Hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about how to get out of Crescent Kick in a lot of situations. So at low percent, there's not a whole lot you can do, except like maybe SDI away to like uh, negate some of the damage. So okay. um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit you with a combo, and I want you to try to SDI um, away as hard as you can, okay? Okay. See, like a low percent, you can't, you can't really do anything about that. You kind of just have to hold right. that. Now, around like 50s or so, that's whenever you, 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 you have to start playing a little more honest. So I want you to do the same thing again, SDI away. Okay. Like, you got to SDI like, pretty hard. Like, you have to like literally like wiggle the stick. Like, what I do to SDI... Keep your elbow loose. Um, do you mm -hmm. use the same controller that I'm using? Like, do you have a custom controller for yourself? I do, but I have a, a pro controller. Okay, that's fine. So what I do is I keep my elbow loose, because when I SDI, I literally use my whole arm. That way okay. I'm not, like, bearing down on my elbow, because that actually cuts off circulation in your arm. It makes it a lot harder, because you end up tensing. So what I want you to do is I want you to keep your arm loose, and whenever you wiggle your stick, literally move your whole arm with it, because you'll move faster, okay. and it won't strain your arm. All right, okay. ready? Yep. See, like, look, you yep. actually got, got out. Of, you got out of the confirm there. Okay. Now that was for up tilt. The thing is, you got to understand about up tilt and like his different linkers, like down tilt, up tilt, jab two, and proximity four tilt. These buttons, jab two, and this one pulls you in. So this time, right. I want you to SDI in hard. Okay. Okay. Oh shit. Try again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right there, like, that's just, that's just like, a, um, not SDI properly. Because I've seen people, people SDI through. So if you're, like, a god, you can SDI out, of, um, SDI in and pop out. But if you're not good enough at it, it's almost always better just to SDI away as hard as you can. SDI away helps a lot with getting out of Ken combos. Okay. 
But the first thing is, like, you need to understand, like, how not to get hit in the first place. So if it's, like, him, like, constantly jumping in like this, that means that he's covering, like, he's coming in on your blind spot, which is a blind spot that a lot of Terry's have, which is kind of, like, right here, right? right? Like, right where I'm kind of floating, like, in this area. Because, like, what they do is they'll sit there and float in that area because they know you're not covering it. So how you'd want to cover that is if you're sitting there, like, turtling or anything like that, you can do things like short hop nair in place, nair to rising nair to, like, fading back. Or you can, like, Rising Nair, like, walk back F-Tilt, because F-Tilt's really good at walling them out as well. And it makes it to where they can't really jump in, okay? Not to mention, if they ever do decide to just unga bunga jump in, don't forget about Spot Dodge Attack. Because remember this, anytime Ken jumps in on you, he's a million times committed to that. He has no air drift whatsoever. The only thing he can do in this situation is, like, maybe wave bounce back. Like that. But, like, if he does that, you can literally just follow that with Crescent Kick and catch their landing. So that's free. So there's not a whole lot you got to worry about that. So just be aware of where your blind spot is, which is just in this area. And just think about Nair. Literally Nair. Like, I want you to Nair in place real quick. Like, as soon as... Like, I'm going to... I'll tell you right now. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna jump in there. I want you to try to hit it out of the air. Okay? Look at that shit. Like, it beats it clean. See, like, even then, there, it traded. It trades. Yeah, so like if you sit here and like space F tilt and then like short hop like Nair when you think they're going to jump in to cover that, you can kind of simply wall them out so it keeps them honest when they jump in. Or you can just simply like condition them with slow power wave when they jump in to spot dodge attack because literally it's free. There's literally nothing right. they can do about that if you spot dodge attack that shit. Or you can just up tilt if, you're got, if you just want to use that. So like anytime there's unga bunga jumping in, you've got to use that. Another thing to keep in mind is, um, uh, let's see. Another thing to keep in mind is, like, anytime you win a neutral exchange, like, you hit me with crack shoot and I have to land, the thing is that Terry does extremely well in his advantage is trapping our landings. Because the only thing we really have when we're trying to land is, like, we can Hadoken stall and focus, or, like, follow with an aerial or something like that. But crack shoot covers all of that once we've committed to that, because you're going to beat focus because of multi hit. If we throw out an aerial, unless we hit you from the side, like, you're still going to be covering that, especially if you hit us with the arc of the kick. And if we land on the ground, you can also add extra extra coverage by following with slow power wave, okay? So, like, burn our double jump, or we're above you trying to, like, focus and do this bullshit. You set up slow power wave and crack shoot, you're going to cover everything. Gotcha. Okay, so that's, like, a big thing. Covering the jump ins of the super aggressive bullshit is going to be super important, and turtling is going to help you a lot, which we've talked about as well. So, I feel like the best thing to kind of see where you're struggling at right now is probably just the play. So let's go okay. ahead and SD and play a couple games, and we'll go from there. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask while we're going about this. Sound good? Get back to right, game. Cool. Is there any... Uh, did that answer your questions, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I just need to... I need to get better okay. at SDIing. I don't, I don't do it a lot. And... and <laughs> Listen, I was not a big fan of SDI until I played Smash 4 Bayo, and then I learned to break my stick just so I can get out of certain Bear. combos. <laughs> so, like, if you know, understand proper SDI with Ken uh, against Ken, it's it's super. Cool. I haven't labbed the S um, SDI like you know how to get out of Ken's stuff for a while now. I just kind of always just SDI away, and if you had good enough SDI away, you normally popped out. The best thing to know is you want to start SDIing away, like, if you can, if you know it's coming, if you start SDIing preemptively, like, you can get out of certain things, like, up to proximity um, jab, sure, you can a lot easier. So, like, if I hit okay. you with, like, a crumple, like, focus, into pre mm -hmm. like, if you start mashing SDI, you're probably going to fall out of sure you can. Okay. Or, or if you ma SDI in hard enough, you'll pop out from behind. So, all right, you ready? Gotcha. Yep. Oh, you actually auto cancel. Smart, smart. By the way, right there, where uh, you just uh, burn knuckled, set up slow power wave afterwards because you just put me in a tech chase. If I tech gotcha. roll in, you hit me. If I tech roll away, you get a combo from power wave. Right. Gotcha. Let's go. See, look at that. Can't even jab two crescent kick there. See? Oh, pfft. God damn it, Terry. Oh. Well, damn. Yeah. Just remember when you're getting off the ledge, wait to see like how I'm trying to challenge you at ledge. Like, if I'm standing at ledge, like mashing preemptively, just wait to see what option I'm gonna pick, and then it's like crack shoot me or something. You know that I'm trying to like guess what you're gonna do. Good shit. That was really good. That was good, that was good. 
That was so good! I can't just force my way past you. You actually know how to anti air ledge. By the way, anytime you know you're sharking my landings, the most common thing people will do is they'll land in shield. Don't forget how broken Terry's grab is. Just go for that. Right. Alright. That was so good. Yeah, I should. Yeah, 191 definitely dead. You SDI'd there, didn't you? Yes. There you go. Yeah, because if you didn't SDI, I definitely had that. Oh, wow. I oh, did not think that was going to kill me. That shouldn't have. Were you holding away or SDI'ing? I DI'd up. Oh, yeah. That's probably why. You have the uh, DIN on that. All right. <laughs> Bro, Ronan's lecturing and body him? No, I'm not. I'm just teaching him as we go along. Like, he was actually, you were actually doing fine there. Like, one thing I definitely want to see more is fair. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go Terry for a second. I want to show you something in footsies that I want to see you do, okay? Indeed, I keep I don't do out of shield fair like I should honestly. It's not even out of shield fair. It's just like uh, a certain flow chart that I've learned that's really safe with Terry. Whenever I'm playing in footsies against someone how I know is trying to box with me on the ground, which is what I'm going to do. And any smart Terry who is going to do as well, because like I mean any smart Ken is going to do because let's say start ungabunging in and they see that that doesn't work and you know the clear counterplay to that, they're gonna want to start playing footsies. With you. Okay, so one thing I've been learning to do is like if I'm sitting here walling with something like fair, I mean like four tilt, after four tilt I can I can space forward fair like this, right? Okay. So like if they you see they're respecting you, it can give you an opportunity to space and set up like you know turtling. So like throw out four tilt, fade back fair, you see what I mean? And then if like you can start baiting, they're like, oh I'm in shield now. He keeps on fading back going to shield. Then you can start throwing in the mix of I'm gonna spot dodge, or I'm going. To like rising tackle preemptively, or I'm going to out of shield there to make you think that you can punish this. See what I mean? It gives you extra coverage, but you're still technically pressuring it because you're like you can set up things like this, F tilt. Oof. See how much coverage that does? And not only right. can you do this with fair, this is actually something I've been doing recently. So I'm gonna go ahead and teach you this. One thing else you can do is do it with down air too, because down air is actually a really good approach to it because you can fade back with it, or you can land with it with an air. See what I mean? So you have extra layers to it whenever you're sitting here walling them, but you're not necessarily just camping. You're still putting on the pressure. And this is all safe because you're spacing it. Make sense? Fair. Yeah. That okay. Way. I get you. All right. Let me go ahead and go back to camp. Yeah, that's the one thing I've been learning. Like, the turtling mechanics and stuff like that, I feel like I was tunnel visioning on hard. Now I'm trying to, like, add some layers to it for myself as a player. So, like, now it's all about, like, having good footsies okay. and knowing how to implement turtling with that. So you're not just, like, relying on the gimmick of, I'm hoping you're just going to challenge me on sh uh, challenge my shield so I can up B and kill you. Now it's, right. I'm, I'm going to keep on spacing these safe ass moves and abusing my broken out of shield options. Because I have so many different ones that are good to make you come and play my game. And I'm just going to counter hit you because I have broken priority on everything. Because I'm Terry Bogart. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, like, when I'm playing in any other character, I don't have any problems. I'm starting to, like, it, it's the characters that, that get you tilted quick. And Ken sure you will tilt you every time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But I, I will be the first one to tell you all of my characters are grade A bullshit. But you got to just embrace the bullshit and be even more bullshit than the bullshit. All right? <laughs> That was good. I should have released it. Remember, take your turn at ledge. Don't try to force something. That ain't there. I'm just going to sit in hold position and, and trap you at ledge. If I'm acting second and you try to force yourself off ledge, you're going to get punished. That was good reversal. That was amazing. I'm checking your awareness right now because I'm going to try to go high and see how well you're covering that. Smart. Get 
shit, good shit. Just remember, watch for me to whip button so you can uh, whip punish with crack shoot. Anytime I whip a button, you can just crack shoot. Good shit. By the way, also remember this. If your Ken player isn't hitting super low on shield, you can rising tackle out of shield or spot dodge. Okay. You had the right. You, you're, you had the, your heart was in the right place there. Yeah, I auto cancel it. Don't forget about that fourth tilt. Just think about it. I'm sitting here spacing mostly mid range buttons, right? Right. So anytime I whiff any of these, there's nothing stopping you from just like crack shooting or F tilting. Your F tilt will beat all of these buttons. Here, like literally, I'm gonna foot foot sword war. Crank, try to clank with it. Oh shit. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I wrong? Hold on. I never tested this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there's a clank. Yeah. Oh my god, it wins! Okay, never mind. Ken Fort Sword's officially more busted than Terry's. Alright, never mind. Yeah, if I space that into itself, it's safe. But what you can do is, like, if you know I'm doing that, you can wait for the second one and just crack shoot with punish it. So this is the bad position. See, like, okay, so when I'm in that position right there and I have to force my way down, just hold center stage and wait to see where I pick to go. Set up slow power wave and then crack shoot. Or burn knuckle, even. Because you'll have the power wave to also break, um, to break the armor as well on uh, focus. Oh, also, attack cancel back air is way easier on the controller. I've learned. I wish I could fucking attack cancel with the FGCs. I can't. So here, let me let me show you an easy way to do it. All right. So it's a three but uh, it's a it's a three button combo. All right. The first thing you got to do is input dash and hit it on the C stick, and the last button you should hit is jump. Okay, the big thing that a lot of people fuck up on, including myself, because I'm not consistent with this either, um, is they end up hitting jump either, like, too early, or, like, they're just mashing shit all together too quick. You can literally right. hit in, like, dash and in on the C-stick at the same time, and then hit jump, and you'll get it every time. Just make sure you hit jump at the la at the last of it. So, it should look like I this. mean, I can do it with, like, other characters, but the auto turnaround, I don't know if it's that, but it, it fucks with me. Think of it as an input. Okay, like, um, that, like, as soon as you input dash towards me, hit in on the C-stick and then hit jump. You're hitting jump too yeah, early. That. Yeah, that's because you're hitting jump too early. That's exactly uh, what that is. So as soon as you input dash and hit in, hit jump. Okay? Like, don't even think about doing it fast. Like, literally, like, hit, like, first, like, literally hit, um, dash, uh, and, and hit in on the C-stick. Uh, there you go, you just did it. Okay. So slower. Yeah, you literally, just, you don't have to do it super quick. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Okay, I'll work on that then. All right, Ooh. dope, dope, dope. All right, let's keep going. Good shit. Right, taco. See, like right there. I'm gonna try to force my way down. How can you cover as many options as possible? Anytime you know I'm just gonna unga bunga down, dude. Crack shoot beats all options. Gotcha. The only thing that won't work is if I hit you from the side. So you want, if I'm landing, you want to use the arc to hit. Because I hit you from the side, you're, you're gonna be open. Shit. That was such a good angle. Holy fuck. That was really good. That was good. Like, anytime you know that I'm going to try to force myself on stage like that, just be thinking, okay, if, if, if you recognize it, obviously. Like, if you recognize that I'm doing that, just put something out that's high priority. Like, F-Tilt or anything. Anytime your opponent's openly just, like, trying to force shit that's not real, just punish him for it. There you go, good shit. Ah! 
that was amazing SDI. Uh, uh, you SDI'd the, SDI'd the first one though. You SDI'd the first one though. I'm focusing so much on the SDI. And you I'm have to. Anything afterwards. If, <laughs> if you don't SDI against Ken, you're just going to give him free kill confirms the free combos. You better SDI. Don't forget fair enough tilt. See, like, right there, you're constantly retreating when you don't have to, man. Don't be afraid to throw out forward tilt. You, like, remember what your boxing tool is. Jab one, F tilt, right. down tilt, all of those are good. Short hop nair literally beats a lot of my buttons in up close. And then you have fair. All right? You definitely can box with me. Don't over-respect me. Shit. Oh, I got destroyed for that. I deserve that. I'm openly doing this just to kind of make you, like, you know, call me out for doing dumb shit. Because if you're catching me for this, then you're going to catch anybody for it. Okay, shit. Shit. That, uh, F smash is totally unintentional. <laughs> oh, was it? You want to crack you, did you? I wanted, uh, a burn knuckle, but I didn't, uh... I don't know if I did the, the quarter circle fast enough. Call, called out the double jump? Good shit. Oh, that was such a good call out. That was such a good call out on the Hadoken. Alright, good shit, good shit. Um, yeah. I'm starting to see right now, like, where what's happening right now. And, like, like I said, you could definitely be doing a better job of trapping my landings, because that's definitely the weakest part, part of the matchup for Ken, is landing. Because Terry, right. that's good at trapping landings is hard ledge trapping as well you're getting better at like calling me out i feel like you're doing a lot better at that than catching my landings and footsies definitely need i definitely am seeing that with the footsies right now so i want to play um well, i'm gonna go back to ken but i'm gonna play footsies against you with my terry and i'm gonna show you how i um how i would play if that's okay just so you can kind of yeah, see good. how i use fair and how i use f tilt that way you can kind of be like oh, okay i can do that Terry's face looks nice up close. Oh, it definitely does. His model looks so much cleaner than, like, like Ryu and Ken's. It's not even funny. And Ken looks better in this game than he has in Street Fighter in years. Yeah, and Ryu gets the worst of it. <laughs> oh, God. Ryu just... God looks damn, like man. touched up Smash 4. He honestly does. All right, here we go. Out of shield there. Good. You see, like, how I'm just covering, like, all this space? Yeah. That was good. Covered the blind spot. That was good. That was really good. And if you notice, I'm always setting up power wave when I push push you away from me to add, add that extra pressure. The slow power wave is really good. And I stay boxing at mid-range the whole time I do it. You knew, you, you thought I was gonna commit there. I, I did. See, that's a, that I, I messed it up. I messed it up, but you saw what I did with Power Wave Burn Knuckle there, right? When, when I see you commit, I set that up. And I, like all this, that when I space it properly, it's all safe. Good shit. That was, yep, yep. I know, I know, but I fall for it anyways. That was good. 
Did that actually punish my neutral dealer? Slow power wave is like, holy fuck, okay. Yeah, I asked for that. I would suggest saving that replay, because I feel like the way I played footsies there is exactly what I want to see. Because if okay. you notice, I'm constantly like spacing with the F tilt, and then I use the cl like if you're like far away from F tilt, I'll use the opportunity to set up F um, fair just so I keep on pushing the safe pressure on block. It's just all about safing is like spacing those mid range normals and just harassing your opponent on block because eventually you're gonna take down their shield and they're gonna have to do something. Okay. All right, let me go back to Ken. Is all this making sense though? Like, am I? Is this all clicking? Okay, good. Now you're good. Okay, dope, dope, dope. <clears throat> Um, is there any specific questions that you would like to, like, throw by me for this matchup? No, I think I just need to stop being, uh, skittish for Terry. Yeah, I definitely pick it up on that, because a lot of situations in footsies, you'll, like, back off on me. My brain wants, wants a, a, just a hold attack for Roundhouse, and it's not there. Oh, okay, yeah, because of Ryu. Any panic situation, I have Roundhouse. <laughs> Well, I mean, literally, change roundhouse to, like, sure hop in place with Nair, or, like, F-Tilt Fair, or something like that. Oh, that was good. That was really good. Nice. Look at that. Holy shit. Yeah, you're already spacing fair better. Oh my god. Down smash is underrated as fuck, by the way. Believe it or not, F tilt down smash. Oh my god. F tilt down smash when space is actually pretty safe. I rarely ever get punished for doing that. Oh yeah, you're even mixing it up with down here now. See, like, I'm already pressured. Like, I'm having a lot harder time getting in now. Ah, uh, you dropped it. I did. I did. That was the worst drop ever. I literally died away. I I literally just let that. Yeah, see? Oh, sh Oh, my God. I literally shat the bed there. No, like, right now, like, how are you ending jab three and, like, following up in the slow power whip to add on the extra pressure? That's really good, too. Yeah. Hello? This man parried all that shit. The model shit. That's a thing too, yeah. Space and bear on top of a uh, F smash is dumb with this. Oh absolutely. As you can tell I can't talk and play at the same time. Oh that oh that's fine, that's fine, it's fine. Trail off. If you gotta like just like focus on the game, that's absolutely fine. No, you played footsies way better there, but I'm still seeing a blind spot issue. Like anytime you're ledge trapping me, I'm literally mashing the same option every time. I'm almost always jumping over you with Nair because it's working. Your opponent is always going to spam the same option until you make them respect you in that position. Okay, so I'm gonna go Terry again, and I'm gonna show you how to cover jump and also be able to cover other options. That way you don't have to like I'm not gonna just easily get around your bullshit. All right, one second, let me go Terry real quick. Because I feel like once you start, like, I'm going to tell you right now. You master the position of trapping my landings and, and, like, playing at ledge and playing footsies. Like, those are the three things. The three things all you need to, to know to be good in this matchup and just about all matchups. So, one second, let me go Terry real quick. Okay. So, the main thing whenever uh, I'm dealing with a kin that likes to jump above my head a lot, when I'm, I'm standing about, like, roll distance or about mid-stage... With Terry, sometimes I'll stand mid-stage if I can't really react to them jumping, just because it makes it easier for me to, like, you know, 
cover, you know, cover most options, which is covering center stage, because they have to challenge me if they want center stage, which is ultimately what Shoto's want. When I'm standing at roll distance, one thing I like to do is, like, I'll simply fade back into this and, like, raising Nair, like this. Because if they jump up and they try to Nair me here, then this will definitely, my Nair will win. And I can burn Knuckle and send them back, okay? Another one you can do would be, like, as soon as they grab ledge, slow power wave, then jump right here at ledge. Because then, like, if you put a Nair here or something like that, it makes it where they can't really, if they do match jump, they're going to get hit. And if you fade okay. back with it, like, you'll be able to still cover roll. Or you can, like, fast fall and then just dash back. So, like, you do things yeah. like, um, set up slow power wave, Nair, fly back, go here, turtle. If they jump, then they'll end up getting, like, you know, hit with up B as soon as you see them jump, because you can react to that. Okay? So, yeah, like... I think I'm trying to rely on this too much at ledge. I mean, it's good. It's good to... Re like, it's not... It is something that's good, but you have other options, too. Nair, uh, like, up air in place, like, this up air, because, like, if they jump right above your head, like, if you just hold jump and up air, you're gonna get this. Okay? I've been using up air a lot for just covering right above my head because if they do jump, like go ahead and try to jump above my head. Oops. Spot dodge attack as well. See? Then you just burn knuckle. So yeah, it's kind of give you an idea of like options you got there. So keep that in mind whenever you're dealing with me matching jump and ledge because I'm telling you right now, every Ken does it. Every fucking Ken does it, and if you don't punish it, they're gonna keep doing it. Dude, every Ken just jumps. <laughs> yes! Yes, they do. So many jumps. So, like, if you start abusing how committal those jumps are, they're going to get completely waxed. Because right. when they start getting impatient to stop wanting to play neutral, which most Kens suck at anyways, then you can just take advantage of Kens' really, like, bad committal options, disadvantage, and getting off ledge. And you can literally just make them come to you. And, but, like... In a and still an aggressive way because you're still putting on the pressure like I was showing you before. You're like you don't want to necessarily camp, you just want to pretty much be safe. You know what I mean? That's pretty much the moral of the story. Just be safe, space your bullshit, and make him come to you and make him commit. Hey, how you doing, Azura Mafu? All right, it's going good. Right. I'm ready Three, for it. Two, Bring it on. One, go. Shit. Yo, yeah, you can, uh, if you know they're gonna Hadoken, you can literally fare through it and fastball down tilt and punch me for it. Forget about that F-Tilt. You know I'm trying to bully my way in on the ground. Power Wave will also keep me honest if I'm trying to dash you walk in and like, hit the cancel in and shit. Good shit. That was really good. Punish the lag on Hadoken. Yep. I knew I was going to try to jump overhead. Now how am I going to land? See, like when you win a neutral in an action like that, when you anti air me, always be asking yourself, how does he want to land? Is he going to challenge me for stage control? Or is he going to go to ledge? Right. Oh god. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna be boxing with you mid-range. I'm gonna make you get good at that in that in that area. That's gonna be the moral of the story. How well are you good at, are you at like mid-range boxing? Because if you get good at that, you can literally play any matchup. Oh, you're trying to get a dash attack out? I was just trying to do an instant dash attack and didn't do it. <laughs> dash attack is broken as hell, too, for catching our landings. By the way, I want to show you this. I don't know why I forgot to tell you this. I'm going to land in there, and I want you to try to dash attack me, okay? When I'm landing with Nair. Like, try to hit the hitbox. I got you. See, like, you can literally just catch our, like, any of our aerials with your dash attack. It just beats everything. And dash attack is actually your fastest burst. So keep that in mind. 
It's actually faster than crack shoot. But whenever it comes to catching landings, like, crack shoots better for in this situation because it breaks focus. But when you know they're going to commit to an aerial or some bullshit like that, just keep that in mind. And right. if you pair it with power waves, like slow power wave, it'll break focus anyways. All right, you ready? Yep. That was attack cancel. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, so, like, the one th gripe I have there is, like, the overcommitment you had there at the ledge. Like, anytime you win a neutral interaction, the first thing you need to be thinking about is the position of how you're going to position yourself next. Okay? Positioning yourself for, like, how can I set up a reset after I open up my opponent, and how can I cut him off from as many options as possible? So, I'm going to go Terry real quick, and I want to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Because you're doing good at winning these neutral interactions, but what I'm seeing right now is a positioning issue. Okay, like positioning yourself to cover the most options and stuff like that. And I know you hear me talk about it a lot, but it like it kind of seems like it's not fully clear because I don't really see you like like consistently setting your like positioning yourself every time you win a neutral interaction. So let me show you like, like the three ones. Like there's three. There's three that I really want you to understand. Okay, there's the ones where you send them in the angle of a tech chase, hit them up in the air with crack shoot. When you set them up at ledge, when you know they're gonna be sent off ledge. Okay, so hold on. So, for a, an easy one like this, all right, if I hit you with something like this, my first position right. is going to be right here away from you, because ultimately, the only way you um, you have to land is to force your way down, which I have slow power wave, I'm going to instantly set up, I always do this every time I hit crack shoot, every time, okay. because if I, if I see, because it gives me time to like, if they try to force their way down, I can literally just buffer crack shoot, and I'm going to cover anything anyways, or if I have buster wolf, I can like, coil that, and I can get that ready too, so anytime they try to force their way down, they're getting hit. So that's covered, naturally. And if they burn their double jump, it's super covered because now it's free. Now, if they try to force their way over me in this position, then I just simply dash back and then I just hold center stage. Again, same position. Okay, so I position myself after I win that. Now, if I was to do sand, sand, if I land something like, bust, bust, like something like this, I immediately set up here. So you see, grab ledge, I use this as my visual cue to set up this all up, and then I start, let my, I set up my ledge trapping. And I'm watching your model the whole time I'm doing this, that way I know how I should respond, okay? And uh, there was a there was another one, there was another one, there was another one. Ah, fuck, which one was tech it? Tech chase. Yeah, tech chases. So like, if I was to hit you with something like this, I'd set up slow power wave instantly. Why? Because if I let if that if you tech roll in, I'm right here at tech roll distance. If you tech roll away, the slow power wave is going to chase after you. You tech roll if you tech in place, the power wave is going to hit you and I can punish you. So all options are covered. Those okay. three positions, those three simple resets and ways of positioning yourself, is literally all you really need to like have a, as a base to understanding how to set up your resets and how to position yourself after you've won a neutral exchange. Make sense? Yes. Okay, dope. I'm gonna go back again. Is all this helpful? Yes. Good, good, good. My brain does half of this shit for you, but I don't know why I use a different character and it just doesn't happen. You're a quick learner, dude. Like, normally when I point this shit out, at least from the couple sessions we've had, you normally implement it really quick. So, I have faith in you. It just, I think that, like, the reason I repeat myself a lot isn't necessarily to, like, hear myself talk. It's, like, to refer this stuff to you. That way it puts right. it in your mind in the moment. So, I know it sounds like a broken record, but it works. <laughs> it definitely works. It works for me, at least. Well, like it, like you said, I, I've gotten infinitely better with Ryu since we've started doing sessions, so. Good, good. I'm glad to, sure. glad to know that I'm actually helping. All right, let me go back to Ken. Ten. So, are you feeling any better about Ken so far? No. <laughs> oh! Okay. Well, shit! I gotta do a better Not job. Not your fault. Not your fault. <laughs> He's a scary character, man. My brain man. shuts off when Ken comes in. It just <laughs> Ken comes into play. My brain's like, shit. All right. Here comes a fiery shore. You right to my tate. I can't deal with it. It's just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. 
See, like right there, power wave as well. Same thing with crack shoot. You set up in position the same way. Good shit. Nice. Yes, good shit. That was really good. Because that covers that, that literally covers one of the show's best mix ups. Oh my god. That was really good. That was really good. That was amazing. That was amazing. You immediately, as soon as I, got, I grabbed ledge, you set up and you went back to roll this. Mistakes are made. Oh, yep, that was the model shifting. The way you're spacing yourself right now is the best you have this whole session, by the way. Good shit. Caught my landing. See, anytime I jump over there, you can literally just catch my landing with slow power wave. It's so free. Good shit. The only reason I talked to you past you because I caught you in the middle of your jump. Because you were committed to an option at that time. No! Oh, the Terry not grabbing. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I was like, yeah, he'll do it for me. He will. Yeah, no, he didn't. He didn't. Oh, Terry will do a lot of things for you, but it won't be grabbing the ledge. Evan Air's oh. I'm telling you, every time when I go F tilt into a uh, burn knuckle, it just doesn't. Nope. <laughs> okay, none of that was true, by the way. So, yeah. down, tilt, uh, down tilt crescent kick, low percent. Here, let me show you something real quick. I did it! That way you don't get hit with some bullshit, like, you know, fake-ass combos from a Ken player. Um, whenever they uh, do certain moves like Jab 2 or Down Tilt Crescent, it's not true at lower percents, but the higher their uh, rage goes, the more true their uh, combos become because of their hit stun getting amplified because of rage. Okay, okay. so I'm going to hit you with Jab 2 and go into Crescent Kick. I want you to buffer shield. The cool thing is, is if you buffer shield and hold down at the same time, you can even spot dodge attack or rising attack when I do this. Okay. So I'm gonna hit you with jab on shield, and I want you to. Um, I'm gonna hit you. With, no, I'm gonna hit you with jab on hit, and then I want you to buffer shield. See? Then you can just get out of that. Same thing with down tilt. Sure, you, uh, down tilt crescent kick. Try again. Try again. Oh, let me hit you on uh, on hit. Oh shit. Try again. One more. At that Very percent? Good. Okay. Try a jab two again. Oh shit, let me try again. See, around that percent is when it starts becoming true. Hold on, let me get your low percent again. Okay, try over down third again. What the fuck? Okay, that is weird. I swear to God, dude, any other character, they that is not true. Try jab two. Yeah. Wow! That's Terry specific. I did not know that. I swear to God, if you go Ryu, I swear to God, it will not let me do that. That's crazy. I just learned something. I didn't know we had that. I swear to God. I swear to God, it does not work. But, like, whenever the, you start getting a higher percent, that's whenever it will start working. But SDI, like, SDI on Jab 2 is so good. Like, SDI on Jab 2 Crescent Kick, like, you'll if you have good SDI, you're popping out of that every time. That's why you see a lot of people go for, like, Proximity Forward Tilt, because Proximity Forward Tilt's a lot harder to SDI out of. I got you. Terry can't get out of Down Tilt Crescent Kick with SDI. Well, that's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. No, that was because he's supposed to be able to, to, be, to buffer um, shield. Like, every other character I've done this to, they've always been able to buffer shield at lower percents, but higher percents, this becomes true. And the reason I like um, Down Tilt... Say what? Go ahead. 
The reason I like down tilt um, crescent kick is because it leads into um, F tilt and down smash a lot easier than uh, like a lot of other combos that are easier to SDI. Also on Terry, um, jab two into Buster Wolf. Can you just buffer shield on that too? Um, if you don't pop them up, if they're not popped up okay. a bit, then yes, they can just buffer shield. Okay, now same setup. I want you to buffer shield after I hit you. See? Yep. <laughs> See? That's literally Kill. just for That's Terry. Terry apparently. Oh my god, dude. I, I, did, I did not know that shit. Wow, that's broken. That's actually broken. Okay. Alright, hold on. Don't. No, never mind. Oh, okay, shit. What are we gonna do? Hey, we can just run this match real quick. Oh, okay. If you wanna run Ryu, we can. Just gotta see how um, different you do with Ryu versus uh, Ken versus instead of like, Terry. If you'd like to do that. Man, that is wild. I did not know that that was a thing. I'm gonna abuse the shit out of that against Terry now. There you go. Huh. Why is it true, though? That makes zero sense. Because, like, it's not his weight. Like, if it was weight, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, Ryu's around the same weight, right? <clears throat> I think so. Like, I mean, I think he's heavier than Shota's, but not by a lot. I thought it could have been me, but it, I, it was easy to do it on the... When I have Ryu, so I don't know. Oh, it catches him on the landing frames. Okay. All right, you ready? Yep. Nice. Oh shit. I love that mix up so much. So, the big thing I want to point out to you right now is all this is, all I am focused on is winning the poke war. I'm literally just focusing on like poking with things like hard down tilt, F tilt, dash walk hard up tilt, pivot cancel forward tilt, like slow, low, like there. Like I don't normally come in like this. I keep it low to the ground because when I keep it low, it's easy to hit on block and making it safe. Okay? So that's what I kind of want to see you do. All right, here we go. Down smash as well, I forgot that as well. And then, okay, pause. After you um, hit me with Hadoken, you want to dash walk afterwards. Because it'll position you at mid range. Here, hard down tilt and hit me with a Hadoken, then dash walk afterwards. Now you can't buffer yeah. it. You got down tilt. You try to buffer it. Try again. Yeah. Try again. See? Puts you right on top of me. And then afterwards, you can like buffer down smash or an F tilt or a jab or whatever. Alright, let's go. Shit. Mistakes were definitely made. I had no double jump. Shit. That was that was really good. That was really good. Don't normally condone Rock Tatsu, but if you know you can get away with it, it's a call out. All right, but like normally I would. Not know. <laughs> Shit. If I cross you up with Nair like that, you can't sure you out a shield. Oh, right. Yeah, do not forget about that. If I mash on you in this matchup, just let me. That was good. That's another one that's really good. Um, 
whenever you know that your opponent is sent off at that angle, as Shoto's or even as Terry, you can actually just grab ledge, wait for them to have to recover in his back air. Especially, like, if uh, you're dealing with Ken, if he has to recover from that angle I sent you at, he has to toss to. And you can just grab ledge right. and back air him. All right, all right. Time for one more? Yeah, we got time for one more. So how are you feeling about all this so far? I feel like I'm going to have to do some practicing. I think I think it's just implementing new things. I think that once you add a little more depth to your footsies, you start to like, you know, really master option coverage whenever it comes to like dealing with like Ken's disadvantage, you're going to see a lot more progress. That was all um, that you can sure you had a shield on a lot of that by the way. Yo, see? Like, look at that shit. Just, I got you. Just do that shit. Don't let me mash on you. Good shit. Also, with Ryu, don't be afraid to just, like, literally sure hop Nair in place. Because, like, if I dash in, like, a lot of times it'll just interrupt me. Just, like, carry Nair. I was dead. I know I should have taught you there. Oh well. That was good. You got it anyways. It's okay. You picked it up. I'll just wait. Wait a second. Yeah, hard up tilt roundhouse is actually safe on parry. It's pretty dumb. Okay, you know to roll in on that. That's good. Nice, nice. So good! How low you're hitting there on block is actually really good for me. Actually safe. This man actually parrying out here. Oh, Jesus. We're having a parry war out here, bro. Good shit. Yeah, destroy you. Don't let me do that shit. Don't get hit by the fake shit. The goal of the matchup, make the kin play honest. Because <laughs> they will play very dishonest if you let them. Get away with the sure you there. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and do a quick breakdown. All right. So first off, understand the weakness of the kin. Landing. Anytime I'm landing, literally just focus on trapping where you think I'm going to land. With with Terry, you need to grab more. Whenever you know that they're constantly buffering shield on landing because they know you're going to throw out something meaty, especially on Wi-Fi, it's so easy to mistime that. So what you'd okay. want to do is you'd want to go for a lot more dash grabs because you can set up things like like forward throw, slow power wave, and like set up resets that way. Kind of like I was talking about with the tech chase setups and how you can like kind of cover a lot of different options. Okay. Don't forget the three things I told you about option coverage. When you so when you send them in a t uh, you send them above your head, focus on covering like spacing yourself to like where all your burst options can hit, and you can set up slow power wave for the extra layer of coverage. When you send them into a tech chase, just remember to set up slow power wave for that extra layer of coverage too. And anytime you set them up at ledge, just always reposition yourself at like about mid distance and like use the visual cue of them grabbing ledge to set up. Okay, that way you'll have extra layers of like uh, like you know of coverage, and you're not committing. You're spacing safe buttons, and you're technically acting second. So it makes your opponent have to play around that, and it makes it easy for you to condition them. All right, you start getting better at that, and then Kens are gonna start being super linear and forcing their way in with all the bullshit. 
Rising Tackle out of shield, Spot Dodge Attack, Nair out of shield are all really good for dealing with Unga Bunga Ken jumping in on you because if you don't cover the blind spot above your head, they're going to abuse that. The moment you start to understand how that where that blind spot is and you understand how to cover that, they start falling apart normally. So then they're going to have to start playing honestly on the ground, and that's where your footsies, that's where I was, I was preaching the footsies with like F tilt, mm -hmm. um, using F tilt fair, F tilt down air, you know, kind of close the distance, kind of put on the pressure, fade back, all that bullshit. It's going to help. Like, I think that's the main thing. Like, all those things. I feel like once you start adding that, it's going to get a lot easier for you. Okay? Don't sleep on Terry's out of shield game. They're, it's all busted. All of it. All of his options are really good. Even down air out of shield. Down air out of shield is like only one frame, is one frame slower than jab out of shield. So, like, just really, like, experiment with that when you're in training room. Like, all the different ways you can really abuse Terry's out of shield game. And it's going to help you out a lot when you're dealing with a mashy ass Ken. All right? Don't forget about SDI. SDI is also really important. A good way to practice SDI, um, go in the training room, take the the item, the bomb, the B-bomb thing, throw it down, and then SDI um, different directions as hard as you can, and it'll actually show how, how far you can SDI. Think of it like a mini game in like Mario Party. You throw the bomb down, and then you just try to practice the different ways of SDIing, and then it'll kind of sh see, it'll show you where you're at. When you start getting really good and SDIing out of the bomb completely, that's when you know you're starting to get good at it. Okay. Either that or one of the characters from Flame Breath would probably help too, I yes, guess. Yes, yes, like someone like Bowser or like someone like that. Yeah, that's actually a perfect example. Anything like that will definitely help. Or you can always like set someone like Lucario to like charge their Aura Sphere or something like that. I don't really know if it works like that. I could be wrong, but like anything like that that's a multi-hit that blows up or anything like that, just practice using that, okay? Yes, sir. Dope. Is there any questions you got for me, fam? No. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go... Uh grind out in some arenas and see if I can uh, get some of this working. Dope. Um, this will more than likely go up on YouTube, fam, so you'll have this to look back on and along with my backlog, so hope you're looking cool. forward to that, fam. Thanks, sir. No problem, man. Thanks again for this controller, fam. I definitely appreciate this. Yeah, no problem, bud. Alright, I'll see you next time, fam. See ya.